My name is Warren Perrin. I'm the chairman of the Acadian Museum in Erath, Louisiana. This museum was begun in 1990 to tell the story of the Acadians and how they were deported by the British in 1755 and ended up in South Louisiana where they started a whole new culture called the Cajun culture. And right above my head here, you see what is the Acadian flag, which represents over two million Acadians who were deported through a diaspora, and they are now found in over 40 countries throughout the world. But the largest concentration, approximately 500,000 descendants of the original Acadians reside in this area of South Louisiana. We'll now go into the Acadian room. This is the Acadian room, and we depict the story where the Acadians left France in 1604 and established the first permanent settlement in North America, which was in Port Royal, which is now Nova Scotia. At that time, it was called Acadie, hence the first settlers became known as Acadians. And from 1604 until their deportation in 1755, they developed a new ethnicity. They developed a new culture. They became independent and came very close to declaring their independence from the British. But sadly and tragically, they were deported in 1755, put in concentration camps during the French and Indian War. And later, some of the first Acadians to arrive in Louisiana settled in this region, led by Joseph Beausoleil, Broussard, who was named the Commandant by the Spanish government, which then controlled Louisiana in 1764. As a result of the tragic deportation, we began an effort to get an apology from the Queen of England, and on December 9, 2003, Queen Elizabeth II signed the Royal Proclamation declaring that the deportation was a wrong committed in her name against the Acadian people. And she also designated a day of remembrance, July 28th of each year, beginning in 2005, will be a day when the world will be asked to remember the suffering of the Acadian people, which clearly was a holocaust because over one third of the Acadian people died or were killed during this diaspora. We'll now go into the room which displays the only replica of the Queen's Royal Proclamation in the United States. Here we show on this wall the story from the beginning of the effort to obtain an apology for the Acadians' deportation to the culmination of it which is called the Royal Proclamation. It's in French and in English, and it begins with Elizabeth II as head of the United Kingdom. And it goes on to recite the wrongs committed in the name of the British Crown, and that this was something that the world should never forget. And the reason that July 28th was selected at the Day of Remembrance is it because 250 years ago, this year, in 1755 on July 28th, is when the British governor signed the order of deportation, the first ethnic cleansing in North America, sadly setting a trend which would go on against many other native peoples. But although the British, then the strongest military force in the world, tried to destroy this ethnicity from the lands that they had settled, they failed. And the culture survives to this day. And the Acadian people have celebrated three world Acadian reunions, the first 1994, the second 1999, and the third in 2004. And this year, we will again congregate in Grand Pre, Nova Scotia, the national shrine of the Acadians, and we'll remember, and we will never forget and we will hopefully continue to work to prevent ethnic cleansing 
occurring against any other people in the world. Here is Mr. D.L. Minard and Kane his Stewart. accompaniment, Kane Stewart. Mr. Kane Stewart. D.L. is a resident of Iraq. He is the descendant of the, of the Acadians that were deported from uh, Nova Scotia back in, the, uh, in 1755. D.L. is an internationally known 
songwriter and musician. Uh, DL has received many awards, including the Grammar Music Award. And, and he was nominated for the best traditional album in 1993. He is a Louisiana Music Hall of Fame and the Cajun Music Hall of Fame. DL and his Louisiana Aces group received the Times Award in 1993. In 1994, he received the National Heritage Award, which was presented him by First Lady Hillary Rodham Clinton. He has written and recorded 38 Cajun French songs. Menard was featured in an acclaimed 1999 Smithsonian ethnic documentary on ethnic music, River of the Song, which was favorably reviewed in Time magazine. Interestingly, the magazine article highlighted the town of Erath, which has been called the most Cajun place on earth. We present to you their music. And here's a little song that I wrote that's natural, that's uh, wrote it and recorded in 1962, and it's still very much popular. That's the most requested song, the most played song, and the most recorded song. Everybody that's considered a band have recorded that song. It's called the back door. In Cajun French, it's called La Porta Maria. of Erath, the evolvement of Erath from 1999, 
eight uh, correction from 1899 to 1999. The history of ERAF includes the deportation of the Acadians from Nova Scotia. And the residents of uh, Iran today are the descendants of those that were deported from uh, Nova Scotia in 1755. It was a, a group of uh, several hundred that were deported and were supposed to be deported into the colonies of Virginia, and they were refused, and they were then repatriated. They were then sent to, to England and then repatri repatriated to France and eventually ended up uh, in Louisiana when the Spaniards, when the Spanish acquired Louisiana, they wanted to settle this country and they brought the deported Acadians to Louisiana and these are the ones that settled uh, in the Erath area primarily. We feel that Erath is the last vestige of, a, of, a, of the Acadian culture the French Acadian culture. The book, The History of Erath, was authored by, by me uh, and was published in 2000. It covers the deportation and it covers the development uh, of the town of Erath with those Cajuns that came uh, from France to this country. I'm a retired Brigadier General, World War II veteran, uh, that eventually uh, was retired as a Brigadier General, and when I retired, I wrote the, the, I was writing my memoirs and was persuaded by Mr. Warren Perrin to write the story of Erath. And in so doing, I eventually, after completing my memoirs, I eventually uh, wrote a third book, I uh, wrote the history of the 256th Infantry Brigade, the brigade that is presently in Iraq, uh, defending the Iraqis against these insurgents. The town of Erath is located on Bayou T, which is a navigable stream, the only outlet out to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, from the southeastern part of the parish. And my home is on Bayou Teague. I live on Bayou Teague and I have been for over 40 years. And uh, since Erath is the home of the deported Cajuns, the last vestige of Acadian deportation is right here in the Erath area. I felt that it might be important that we recognize that uh, uh, Erath is on a navigable stream with an outlet to the Gulf of Mexico. This is my copy of the Acadian Redemption, which uh, Mr. Perrin, the author, uh, gave to me. Uh, the story, of, of course, about the Acadian Redemption is about uh, Beausoleil, Broussard, whose descendants live in this area, and of which Mr. Warren Byron is, is, is part, and of course about the apology that the Queen of England uh, will render 
to uh, Mr. Warren. Hi, Oprah. I'm Sketch Bork. I hope you enjoyed your tour around my great small town of Erat, Louisiana. And thanks for watching.